Hello, welcome to the math behind bioinformatics, where we dive into the powerful connections between mathematics, technology, and education. I'm your host, Dr. Dilawar Junaid Mir, serving as an assistant professor, mathematics, Chandigarh University Online. And today, we're unraveling the mathematical threads that weave through the complex world of bioinformatics and helps us to decode biological data. To guide us through this exciting journey, we are joined by a distinguished expert in bioinformatics and computer science, someone who has contributed immensely to both research and teaching in this field, Dr. Ashik Hussain Bhatt, serving as an assistant professor, University in Institute of Computing, Chandigarh University. Sir, it is a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much, sir, Dr. Junaid. It is truly a pleasure to be here with you and I am very thrilled to discuss on this topic. So let us start from the basics. Sir, can you explain exactly what bioinformatics is and why is mathematics so essential for this? Sir, uh, bioinformatics actually it's a combination of it's a hybrid subject combination of so many different subjects particularly biology mathematics and computer science uh, mathematics plays important role in this actually the main role of bio uh, this bioinformatics is, is to extract the information that is inside our cells that is the, inside the biological data so mathematics plays important role from beginning to the end in this field so that means it is like the foundation or we can say foundation and the toolbox at the same time. Exactly. Mathematics um, is foundation of uh, bioinformatics and without mathematics, the biological data is just heap of noise. Uh, without mathematical tools, without mathematical models, uh, we cannot do anything from this data. So, since you have mentioned that it is both the foundation and the toolbox for this field, I assume there must be some core mathematical concepts and tools that are commonly used in bioinformatics. So could you highlight some of them? Yeah, definitely. There are so many sub areas of mathematics which are, uh, you know, used in uh, uh, this bioinformatics. Uh, the first one is probability and statistics. It is very important uh, from the beginning to the end of the bioinformatics tools. We are using uh, probability. We are using statistical tools. For example, there is one tool that is called hidden Markov model, which is used in gene annotation find in finding the gene location within the sequences. Similarly, the other area is graph theory. Graph theory is mostly important in creating the graphs, creating the protein-protein interactions, creating the um, uh, evolutionary trees. And uh, similarly, we are having some metabolical pathways which can be showed with the help of graph theory. Another area is um, the main area that is, I think, that is uh, linear algebra. Linear algebra has sub areas like dynamic programming, which helps us in sequence alignment. Um, sequence alignment is based on bioinformatics. Similarly, uh, this linear algebra is also based on foundation of machine learning. With the help of machine learning, we are doing so many, you know, um, uh, things in uh, bioinformatics like clustering, classification. Similarly, one of the tool is there that is called principal component analysis. And this tool is used to, you know, reduce the dimensions in the data. And mostly, we are calling it dimensionally reduction. And uh, we use it in uh, gene expression data to reduce the dimension so that um, the data doesn't become the complex data. So by when we are reducing with the help of PCI, when we are reducing these dimensions, it becomes easy, easy to, you know, analyze, visualize this data. Okay, so that is there is a lot of mathematics behind this. Yeah. Since, uh, you know, sir, there is a foundational course in mathematics called abstract algebra where we study about the structures like groups, rings, semigroups, monoids, fields, and so on. And these things uh, allow us to, they'll help us to understand the symmetry and understand the underlying structures of the mathematical objects in the universe. So what do you think is uh, this algebra is it find the way into the bioinformatics also? Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, group theory, we know group theory is mostly studying the symmetries between the groups. Um, uh, there are a lot of scope of this subject in bioinformatics also. Uh, one of the field is um, uh, protein symmetries where we, uh, you know, uh, see uh, different uh, 3D structures of proteins and we, uh, we are trying to design the proteins that are similar to those proteins which are uh, beneficial and it is mostly used in structural biology. Another 
another area is DNA topology. In DNA topology, with the help of um, these um, various types of groups, we are finding coiling, super coiling of DNA, and that is uh, you know directly related to the replication, and that is also related to the uh, gene expression. Replication is basics of cell division. Without replication, we cannot uh, you know cells cannot uh, divide, cells cannot clone uh, themselves. And uh, number two, that expression. Uh, actually, genes are uh, you know made up of nucleic acid base adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine. Uh, genes have different regions. Uh, for example, if a gene has 10 regions, but the main uh, benefit of a gene is it is creating so many proteins. There is a concept called alternate splicing. With the help of that, a gene can activate at a time different regions. For example, if gene has 10 regions, um, one time it can activate only 5 and another time it can activate 7. So based on these things, we can get different proteins. And these things can be only done with the help of group theory. And there is another um, area where we can use this group theory that is called evolutionary trees um, or phylogenetic trees where we are comparing um, between two phylogenetic trees so that we can get similarity between the species so that means it has a lot of application in this bioinformatics yeah, that it means has... group theory is not just doing computation it helps us to understand how shapes can be formed how yes. can we help uh, how can we uh, evolve them in various fields yeah, exactly. It has tremendous applications in bioinformatics. Let's uh, bring this into the real world. So can you share a notable example where these mathematical tools played a crucial role? Definitely, there are um, you know so many uh, number of so many high number of real world applications. But I will hi highlight some of the important here. One of the notable example is Human Genome Project. Human Genome Project is one of the iconic project in human history, and it has taken almost um, you know five six years, and it has analyzed almost three billion sequences. So uh, after analyzing it, uh, we got almost twenty to twenty five, uh, twenty to twenty five thousand genes in the human. Its main aim was to decode entire human genome and uh, to get the information from the human genome and it is one of the iconic projects in human history. Similarly, we are having cancer research. We are using uh, probability methods uh, to find the genes to find the you know uh, those um, uh, to find the uh, actually mutations in the genes at early stages so that we can cure the um, uh, we can make treatment for the cancer similarly we have some other tools also for example we are having 1100 genome project what this genome project is like human genome project after this this project was created it um, in uh, one genome project we uh, you know collect the genome of one human being but in 11, 1100 human genome project what we do we know there is diversity in population in the world um, some are living in africa some are living in asia some are living in you know america uh, so um, what scientists did they uh, try to you know uh, you know uh, collect data from different sites so they actually collect uh, data from 1100 human, um, these uh, human beings so that we could have every type of genomes in front of us similarly we are having microbiome genome also means the genome of bacteria because you know uh, bacteria viruses algae because there are two types of uh, microbes some are beneficial for us some are not beneficial so we should study the we should uh, you know research these um, the, you know uh, um, microbes also because they play very much important role in our life in our day-to-day -day life so uh, actually currently our you know talk is related to bioinformatics so when we'll get time we'll explore these things also similarly there are some databases also uh, for example with the help of these mathematical tools we could create so many uh, databases like um, gene bank is there uh, like um, uh, protein databases are there pdb is there uh, uniprot is there that is also one of the protein data bank similarly we are having data bank uh, you know dna data bank of japan we are having so many um, uh, databases uh, similarly we are having databases of these microorganisms also so there are so many applications um, where we have used this mathematics. Fascinating. That is, uh, those discoveries are saving lives today. Yeah, definitely. So we should be thankful for mathematics. mathematics yeah. Actually, uh, it is mathematics which is working behind these things. Yes, exactly. Sir, uh, I think there are a lot of uh, mathematical algorithms. So can you share what are some of the major mathematical algorithms yeah, using uh, bioinformatics? There are um, so many uh, algorithms, but I will see, uh, I will um, uh, highlight some of them the important ones the one important one is blast uh, 
it is uh, full name is basic alignment uh, you know the local sequence okay uh, actually what it is doing uh, in this uh, tool in this algorithm we are comparing we are you know uh, uh, mapping uh, sequence uh, dna sequence with the database this is the uh, this working of this is the function of this blast uh, this is called the alignment tool. Yes. Similarly, we are having two algorithms that are based on the uh, dynamic programming of algebra. One is called Needleman Winch, and another is called Smith Waterman algorithm. Uh, Needleman Winch algorithm is also called as global alignment algorithm, and Smith Waterman algorithm is also called a local alignment algorithm. These algorithms have tremendous applications in bioinformatics. They are mostly used to, you know, see different sequences, whether they belong to different species. Uh, they are used to, you know, check mutations they are used to check uh, you know missings in the uh, dna sequences mismatches matches gaps everything whatever okay. is whatever has happened in the evolutionary history these algorithms have you know so much importance in this field similarly there is one more tool that is called a phylogenetic tree and phylogenetic tree is similar uh, to uh, you know family tree in this way where we can get where actually we have evolved which species was you know before us how we have evolved from you know one species to another species it is giving us you know total overlook of this that means these algorithms blend biology and mathematics yeah, beautifully yes, yes so that's great so uh, looking ahead how do you see that mathematics is continuing to shape the future of this subject that is bioinformatics Mathematics, uh, you know, I already told you, mathematics is playing a role from step one to step, you know, final it's step. Foundation. Yeah, it's foundation. It's used in each and every tool. I will give example. In bioinformatics, mostly we are, you know, starting with, with sequence alignment. We are actually getting data from, you know, uh, biological samples like uh, sites, different sites in human being, in cells. Uh, after that, it is totally mathematics. It's totally algorithms behind it, whether it is probability, uh, probability models i already told you um, you know hidden marco models mm -hmm. whether it is dynamic programming different types of matrices are created with the help of dynamic programming and uh, we are giving different scores based on that match mismatches in those matrices and mathematics uh, mathematical equations in these algorithms play a tremendous role um, to f find the insights the, uh, from the information uh, to find the insights from this data okay so that's great sir that's from solving puzzles to saving lives yes, that sir. is the power of mathematics in action uh, definitely sir so sir for students or researchers uh, interested in stepping into this world of bioinformaticus what would be your key advice for them sir um, uh, for uh, those students and researchers who are you know interested in these areas i recommend them i advance i advise them to learn few of the areas the first important area is algebra without algebra i think um, it is impossible to learn these areas similarly second is statistics and probability so because we are using so many probabilistic and statistical models in bioinformatics so these are very important third area is to learn various types of algorithms their complexities uh, what because complexity are very important we because uh, we have to see the computing power of our systems so accordingly we have to learn which algorithm will fit according to our data then um, uh, the researchers and students should also learn programming languages which are you know necessary in these areas particularly python r and matlab these uh, algorithms have so many packages which have um, mathematical and statistical algorithms in in them you know I mean, those packages which contain these algorithms so since uh, you highlight that algebra is very important tool for in bioinformatics yeah, and to do research in the bioinformatics since we know actually this algebra which helps us to understand the symmetries of the universe yes definitely. which was fascinating sir dr ashik thank you so much uh, for such an enlightening and inspiring discussion your insights truly highlight the beauty and power of mathematics particularly algebra and linear algebra in making sense of life itself, it is clear that uh, math is a vital part of understanding life at its most fundamental level. So, to our viewers, if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, leave us a rating, and share it with anyone curious about science, math, or the future of healthcare. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and never underestimate the power of math in decoding life as mystery.
Thank you very much, Dr. Jain. It was a pleasure to be part of this discussion. Thank you, sir. So take care, everyone, and see you in the next episode of the Math Band Bioinformatics. Thank you. Thank you.